out she traveled, honoring women who made a difference. A Cooler Kids gift to our community. A book. Our lives are like a book. Every day a new page is read and new beginnings are arranged. My life was pretty much spelled out for me and I didn't have the chance to write some of my own story. My story said that I would become a teacher or a nurse. I was content with the idea of being a teacher. In fact, I thought it was one of the best things to do. All my life I wanted to teach either history or music, two of the things that most fascinated me. But little did I know that my book was about to change. It was about to turn into something most unexpected, like when a new twist in a mystery book is revealed. Only in my life, it was for the better, and it would change my life for good. I started my professional career teaching music, more specifically singing. I taught for a few years before becoming a pastor. My husband and I both became pastors on the same day. We both worked the same hours and late nights. Many people disagreed with the thought of me working alongside my husband. I was supposed to be taking care of him and the kids while he was at work. Also, many people thought that women should be silent in the church and that I should have nothing to do with being a pastor. But that didn't stop. I lived a great life. I was happy with my occupation and two daughters. My book was going just fine as far as I was concerned, but seven words spoken to me would change my life forever. I had been nominated to be a bishop. Everyone thought this was a marvelous idea. They all seemed to think I was the best person for the job. Everyone thought this but me. My husband said that if I were to be elected bishop, he would help me out with the kids. That was the problem, the kids. What if it popped into my head? What if my children grew not to like me if I was gone all the time? What if they started to like my husband more than me because I was almost never there for them? These thoughts ate at me all the time. I was so confused and scared about what would happen to my life. My husband, being the caring person that he is, assured me that he would never let this happen, even though I had my doubts. gave me much needed support. They told me that every day they would pray for me, but I had my conditions. I said they could pray for me as long as they didn't pray for me to become bishop. The suspense grew as the days lingered on. My life had become wound around every vote, and then the day came with the news. I was the new bishop. Bang! The suspense was broken like a mousetrap going off. My life had sprung into action as the publicity and stress pressed in around me. I visited many of my friends who had supported me through the waiting weeks. When I at last visited my friends at the Winona Diocese, they told me that they had prayed for me to become bishop. Why had they done this to me when I had told them not to? But I forgave them, and now looking back on what they did was actually a good thing. I also felt it was a calling from God, and that I was meant to be a bishop. I have had some very interesting travels as well. My travels have taken me far and wide around the world. But one of the most amazing things happened to me when I went to Hong Kong. I arrived at Hong Kong at 10 o'clock at night, not even knowing where to go. I went to the Lutheran World Federation desk, but no one was there to tell me where or how I would be getting to my motel. This was six days after Hong Kong became under control by Communist China, and the only people to talk to were the soldiers. Because I had no way to find where I could go, I walked up to a communist guard and asked him where my motel was. He told me to take a bus. This was bad advice, but I took it. Anything that would help me find my motel and a nice bed to sleep in sounded pretty good to me. So I was on a bus at 12.30, not even knowing where I was destined for. Soon after riding the bus for a while, the driver kicked me off. I got off at a bar where there was a Chinese man outside. If you can imagine, there were no women, just me and some Hong Kong men. What was I to do? At this point, I just had to trust someone. So I walked up to the man and asked him for directions. He said he knew where my motel was and he would take me there. I trusted him, even though it might not have been the smartest idea. We went under dark bridges and deserted areas that gave me the chills. And yet, this man led me on through the darkness. I always thought he was an angel and that God watched over me at that time. I will never know, only of the kindness of this stranger. 
For many years now, I've been bishop. My experiences have shown me that you have to handle what God throws at you, no matter how difficult. Yes, I was away from my family many days before, but that is a sacrifice I was willing to make. No, they have not loved me any less, but instead have been inspired by my journey. I believe that this has helped me in more ways than one, and more importantly, helped the people around me discover who they are and what they should be. Life is a book, of which we all must read, examining the pages and discovering new things. Some things in this book are unexpected, like my becoming a bishop, but everything always has some kind of ending. Some sad, some happy, some still we don't want to end. But one thing is certain, my life has not concluded yet, and there is much more to this story. This podcast brought to you from La Crosse, Wisconsin by the Cooley Kids at Longfellow Middle School in conjunction with the League of Women Voters.